For those of you who don't know me, I'm Olivia. I'm Abby's older sister and the maid of honor. So, uh, Abby and Caleb, it's time for a calculus lesson. <laughs> what? You thought you could give me a microphone and I wouldn't talk about math? So, the way I see it, every person is like a function. We each have a unique shape to our lives, full of ups and downs. And in calculus, when two functions meet, there are a couple different things that could happen. First, the graphs might not connect at all. Uh, and that's something in math we call a discontinuity. This is really frustrating in math because it means there's a ton of theorems that you can't apply. The function is literally broken, and its pieces are never getting back together, like ever. Some people, like some functions, just don't connect. Clearly this isn't Abby and Caleb, or we wouldn't be here today. Then there's the possibility that the functions do meet at the same point. This opens the door to more useful mathematical theorems. And the way I see it, this is like a relationship where things just click, and you're able to accomplish more together than you ever could apart. Now I still don't think this describes Abby and Caleb. At least not completely, because there's a third scenario. Now, sometimes functions match up, but they match up at a corner, like a sharp angle. These functions aren't what we call differentiable, so we can't use the most powerful calculus theorems. The issue, besides that I have to turn the page, is that in the places where these functions meet, they aren't moving in the same direction. When two functions have the same slope at the place they meet, they create a smooth function, and that is what allows us to do the most powerful mathematics. Abby and Caleb, you didn't just meet in the right place, you met moving in the same direction. You fit together so seamlessly, not because you're both musical theater kids, or because you both have the same fascinating sense of humor, and you share your own interesting secret language like you were saying at breakfast today, but because of the way you orient your lives towards Christ first and let everything else fall into place. This is what truly unites you and lets you accomplish more together than you ever could apart. Like a beautiful differentiable function. Now this is super clear to anyone who knows you too, but I have to say I was very skeptical at first. One month into college and Abby already has a major crush on some guy she just met. Yeah, I'm sure you guys are thinking. But then on November 8th, 2021, almost three years ago, Abby texted in all caps, Caleb knows High School Musical bad lip reading. To which I replied, also in all caps, he's the one. So not to brag, but I called it. And Caleb, let me tell you, you had really high expectations to meet because I've known for a very long time what you've only recently discovered, that Abby is one of the sweetest, funniest, most beautiful humans you'll ever meet. I promise that you'll never find another like Abby. Abby, I love you to the moon and to Saturn. You are such an incredible little big sister. It makes sense that people always assume you're older and not just because you're taller and have way better style. I look up to you so much and not just literally, but you've taught me all the things I was supposed to teach you. How to put on makeup and curl my hair, how to talk to boys, and how to put God above everything else. When you're young, they assume you know nothing, but now watching you and Caleb, you're teaching me what a Christ-centered relationship looks like. I know I'm speaking for more than just myself when I say what a beautiful role model your relationship is. You guys are obviously not perfect, because no one is. But if you never bleed, you're never going to grow. And I've seen how you work through those wrinkles and come out stronger on the other side. I've heard you have conversations so mature and nuanced you think you were twice your age. And I know that after today, I'll be able to look up to you two as an example of a Christ-centered marriage. And Caleb, I am so grateful to have you join the family. I always wanted a little brother, and today that wish has finally come true. You know, when you bring someone to the family, there's always a fear that you won't fit in, but I was reminiscing just the other day about that story that my dad told earlier when you farted directly into his face. Now, if that's not proof that you belong in our family, I don't know what is. But really, these days, even when I'm staying at my parents' house, and the whole Phillips plan is there, it doesn't feel complete without you. I truly love both of you so, so much. So much so that I started writing this speech in July of 2022. <laughs> Two years ago, true story, the notes on my phone. A full year before they got engaged. 
I had a feeling so peculiar that this love would be forevermore because I couldn't imagine a future in which we weren't together. That's how much I believe that God created you for each other. Now this is the part of the speech where the maid of honor typically gives some sort of relationship advice, uh, but you should find another guiding light for that because we all know I can't help you there. But the good news is that the Bible knows way more than I do. So my prayer for you is this from Ecclesiastes 4.12. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. I pray that you always include Jesus in the braid of your life, because he truly is the strongest invisible string that could ever tie you two together. So, long story short, even though you two aren't old enough to rent a car, and Abby can't even drink to this champagne toast, <laughs> there isn't a doubt in my heart that this is your meant to be. I love you so much, and I cannot wait for you to grow, to watch you grow closer as you grow up together. To Abby and Caleb, 